church, how are you guys doing today? Good. Anybody excited to be in God's house this morning? We've had an amazing weekend. We had our encounter retreat this weekend, and so it was our biggest encounter we've ever had at the church. About 85 or 90 people were going through. Um, if you've never been through encounter, I think we'll have one coming up later this year. It's just an incredible time. Um, that's not counting all the people that were serving and helping to make it a part. Um, we're excited this morning. We have a lot of people getting baptized, so that's pretty awesome. I think we have about 15 people getting baptized, so it's going to be a great day in God's house. Amen? Amen. You guys ready to worship? And knock in the doors will open speak in the mountains will move is anything we ask our God can do we believe we believe in the one who freed us trust in the one who hears us anything we ask our God can do let faith arise, let faith arise, God is on our side, God is on our side, it will overcome, the battles are won, and our Savior King, He's our victory. Sing knock. We knock in the doors we'll open speak in the mountains we'll move. Is anything we ask our God can do? We believe, we believe in the one who freed us, trust in the one who hears us. Let's make this our prayer. Let faith arise. Let faith arise. Let faith arise. God is on our side. God is on our side. And we'll overcome. And the battles are won. He's our Savior King. Our victory, because God is with us. Oh, God is with us. He is for us. Faithful is our. Isn't that amazing this morning? Our God is with us. Oh, God is with us. He is for us. Faithful is. Our God, oh, and God is with us, He is for us, faithful he is our God, oh, faithful. Let faith on our side God is on our side and we'll overcome all oh, the battles we won in our Savior King He's our victory Let's lift up a shout of praise this morning Thank you, Lord. Grace that flows like a river Washing over me Fount of heaven, love of Christ Overflow in me 
Let's sing that again. Grace. Grace that flows like a river washing over me. Fount of heaven, love of Christ, overflow in me. Thank you, Jesus. You set me free. Oh, Christ, my Savior, you rescued me. Sing, take this life. Take this life delivered, a vessel of your love. Holy now devoted to see your kingdom come. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You set me. Christ my Savior, you rescued me. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You set me free. In Christ my Savior. Rescued me. Oh, you've rescued me. We worship you, Jesus, King of Kings. Oh, Jesus. You've opened my eyes. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You've entered my heart. You've set me apart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You've given me life. You've opened my eyes. I love you, Lord. moment if you feel comfortable could you just lift your hands we're going to thank the Lord from your own heart 
We're going to say thank you, Jesus. We thank you for that cross where you took our sin and you took our shame and you took our brokenness. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for your blood that washes away all our sin. Thank you, God, for your mercy that you never leave us, you never forsake us. Nothing can stand against 
What a powerful name it is. Come on, one last time. Death could not hold you. And death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the most of sin and grave. The heavens are rolling. The praise of your glory. And for you are raised to life again. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. And what a powerful name it is. And nothing can stand against. What a powerful name. Come on, one last time with all your heart. Let's sing that out. What a powerful name. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. And nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Yes, God, we believe your name has power, God, and we thank you, Lord, for the power of your name, God. It's so beautiful to see all your people here this morning, God, lifting up your name, God, and because we know, God, even as we saw this weekend, God, that there is freedom in your name, God, there is healing in your name, God, that, that every circumstance, every demon has to flee at the name of Jesus, Lord, and we just thank you for the power of your name, God. We give you all the worship. We give you all the praise, God. We give you all the glory tonight, today, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Awesome. Woo. You can grab a seat. Good morning. How are you all doing this morning? You guys sound a little tired. How are you guys doing? You doing okay? I know it's not the Super Bowl quite yet, but it's still a good day to be alive, right? Well, good morning. We're so glad that you joined us this morning here at Joy Church. Um, if we haven't had the opportunity to meet you yet, we would love to get that opportunity to meet you, to meet your whole family, find a little bit more about you, and let you know a little bit more about us. And so the best way that you can do that is right when you came in these back doors, there's a little booth out there. Um, there's some people standing back there. We'd love for you to stop by there on your way out. But if you don't have a chance to do that, right in the seat in front of you, there's a card that says welcome on it. If you don't mind filling that out for us, you can drop it in the offering or leave it at that booth on your way out. We also want to let you know about an awesome opportunity we have all the time, and those are our connect groups. How many of you guys are involved in a connect group? You guys love your connect groups? They're awesome. They are our small Bible studies, and they are really the lifeblood of, of all of us here at Joy Church. And so we'd love for you to get involved in a connect group and find the right connect group just for you and for your family. And you can do that by stopping at that booth or um, you just talk to myself, talk to one of the leaders, or check us out at joychristianfellowship.com. Well, today is a very exciting Sunday, not just because we had an encounter this last weekend, but also because it is our Victory Offering Sunday. So we are so excited to take up our Victory Offering today, and we're going to hear a little bit more about that in a second. But the ushers are actually going to pass out um, some Victory cards to you guys so you have them when it comes to that time. Um, they'll be passing them out to you, so if you don't get one, just let us know. Um, but they're one per family, so just make sure you grab one as they're passing them by for you. Another exciting thing is that if you read your whole entire Bible in 2016, today is Pastor Steve's annual pizza party. So that is going to be a ton of fun. It's going to be in the junior high space. If you read your whole Bible, even from, you know, little kids all the way up, if you read your whole Bible last year, we'd love to invite you to join us for the pizza party today. And then finally, exciting thing for all of our men, starting, um, we're going to be having a monthly breakfast that's going to be starting this Saturday, the 4th at 7 a.m. at the Teapot on Wheels. It's $5 a person. So if you're a man and you like breakfast, and even if you don't like breakfast, You'll, you'll be converted, I think, by the teapot on wheels. So you should come out this Saturday, 7 a.m., all of the men, and join us for our men's breakfast. And now, um, as the ushers are finishing passing those out, we're going to turn our attention to the screens for a quick video. We are Joy Church, and we're about family. It's our history, our culture, and it affects everything we do. We're about strengthening families. We're about training new ones. And about repairing broken ones. 
We're about reaching our city with the Father heart of God. We're about loving, giving, and serving with generosity. We are people of prayer, believing God for the impossible. We are people of honor, loyalty, and integrity. We're about working hard and finishing strong. We're about never giving up on people because there's always a road home. We are people that love the truth of God's word. We're about parents raising great children who become parents who raise great children. We are united across multiple cities and countries. We are Joy Church. And, and we're, we're better together. together. super excited. You know why? Because we believe that God is going to bring victory in every one of your lives if you allow him to. So we are super excited for that. Um, we, most of us have been praying, preparing, and are ready for this day, for this Sunday, because as we saw victories last year through the year, as we gave to God in all different areas of our life, we're excited for what's to come this year. We're believing that we're going to see so many more victories. We're going to see miracles. We're going to see God do some incredible things. And, and some of you guys have been able to be a part of our generosity stories, but we're really excited this morning. We have Buddy and Wendy Acuff, and they're going to be sharing a little bit of their generosity story. So we'll just jump, jump right in. Starting with the first question that I have for you is, when did you start tithing in your Christian walk? Ladies first. <laughs> well, good morning. Uh, thank you for having us up here. It's definitely an honor and a privilege, but mostly we want to make sure that you all know this isn't about us. It's about God working through us and in us and being obedient to his word. And so in 2008, uh, I was in a very broken place. I came to joy and I was at the end of me. I was at the end of my rope had nowhere else to go, and I rededicated my life to the Lord. And so as I began to serve here, and as I began to hear the word here and hear speakers, uh, I realized that in God's word, it says that you have to tithe. It's non-negotiable. It's not a, oh, maybe I'll do a little bit here and a little bit there, but it's 10%. And I took it to mean 10% of my gross. And so I began tithing in 2008. And shortly after that, uh, I heard a message about, well, if you want to see a difference, you want to see a change in your life, you want to see things grow, um, my heart's cry was for my children. And they said, you know, so where you want to see growth. So he began giving to CYM. And I just, I've never looked back from that. And then I also wanted to get out of debt. I was $300,000 in debt at that time. And I thought, God, I'm not meant to carry this type of debt. And of course, all of that was accrued through not holy living. And I believed that God would honor if I began sowing into his church, that I would be able to get out of that debt. So that's where then I stepped it up and I thought, you know what? How better to sow in than to sow into the building fund for the church? Because I wanted to see all that debt gone, so I was going to fund God's house. So he laid an amount on my heart, and I began giving that. And it's been powerful because within one year, I was completely debt-free. That's God. <laughs> That's absolutely God because single mom raising two kids to get out of debt out of $300,000. And just so you know, I did not file for bankruptcy. It was all paid off. How do you say something after that, huh, buddy? That's a hard one to follow up. <clears throat> well, um, I'm going to be honest with you all. I, I, I grew up in this church, and we used to do a pledge, Proverbs 3, 5, and I, I don't know if they can put it up on the screen or not, but, you know, we used to say it, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. These words that we used to sing every Sunday, every Wednesday, I mean, those words got into me. But I'm going to be honest, I wasn't faithful in tithing. 
Um, and it wasn't until, you know, I was, I, I had a, a small encounter with God. I was at a restaurant and, you know, I went to pay for the check and God just said to me, you're going to pay less than what the check says? I'm like, no, I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> then why, you know, if you know what the check is and it's 10%, of your tithe, why would you give any less? And I'm thinking to myself, wow, because <laughs> I don't want to go to jail? <laughs> <laughs> but God really spoke to my heart, and then there was at that point in time, because we talk about tithes and offerings, and God showed me, it's like, okay, so I'm going to give the waitress a tip. That was my offering. So the tithe... There's no negotiation there. I mean, it is what it is, and we pay it. And it was at that point in time, you know, I started paying my tithe. But I'll tell you again, I'm being honest. At the year end, you know, we get our, our uh, slips from church showing how much we gave for the year. I looked at my gross, and I looked at what I gave, and I missed the mark. So... You know, I repented. I was like, you know, <laughs> this isn't right. And I, I thought I gave a lot of money. But really, it's not about the amount that you give. And what I had to do is there was always more bills than money, right? And I would always pay my bills, and then there wouldn't be enough money for tithe. So I changed my, my, my what I started doing. What I started doing was I started tithing first and um, this was before we had push pay so I was just using bill pay through my bank which the church didn't get the money right away but I tithed it was gone I didn't have to worry it was out of my account and then it was easier to pay the bills then um, and then with push pay it's great because you know get paid Friday morning wake up see my paychecks there push pay and I tithe very first thing and there's such a relief in that. Um, but I've also, the nice thing with push pay, and this is just something I do every now and then. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm taking so long. I'll try and speed it up. But, um, you know, for a long time, I was trained by my mother and family that church was, what can I get out of church? You know, I went, to, you know, we would go to church for, you know, money or clothes or food. It was what we could get from church, not what we could give. And um, there were so many times I was blessed, you know, and I've been really blessed by this church. Um, and I didn't give anything back. And because of the way I was, you know, raised, but yet it, I had to change my mindset. And when I started giving back and started really, you know, it's like listening to Pastor Steve or, you know, a guest speaker or anybody and being blessed. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, give anything extra. But yet if I'm at a restaurant and I get good service, I'm going to give a bigger tip. So I started with push pay. I'll, I'll uh, and this is just my thing, but every now and then I'll send a tip because I got blessed. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I don't know if you guys picked up on a couple of things that both uh, Buddy and Wendy said, but they said that they realized tithing was non-negotiable. That's so important that we understand that because it is a command from God and we need to realize that. Plus, did you notice he put a little plug in there for push pay? <laughs> okay, it's so, next, so easy. It's true. And next question, what started your journey of greater generosity? Ladies first. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so you know the story about as far as giving above and beyond the tithe. But what really got a hold of my heart in the generosity was that when we look in the Bible and it talks about the tithe, tithe is what? 10%. And then I heard a message that said, well, then rather than giving a dollar amount, because when you get blessed with more income, 
you're still committed to, let's say, you, you, you're going to say $100 a month. I'm going to give this to CYM. Well, then if God increases your income, then what happens? You stay at that $100. And I heard, why don't you give a percent? So, you know, prayed about it, asked God. So right now I know I can do the $100. So what percentage is that of my income? So I did a little bit of math and figured out what that was. And God challenged me, and he says, why don't you pick an even percent, like 5%, 10%. Pick a number like that rather than 2% or 3%. And, you know, you start where you start. And what was amazing is as soon as I committed to that percentage, within a few months at work, I got a raise. So then I got to increase my giving. And then I got another raise. And I got to increase my giving again. And then I got promoted and I got to increase my giving again. And so it, it's amazing when you really start thinking about it, what you're doing is you're saying to God by saying, I'm going to commit to a percentage. You're saying, if you increase what I have, I will increase what you're getting as well. And it's, yeah, it's beautiful, so absolutely yeah. wonderful. And it's been so exciting. Because I know, I know there's going to be a question coming up as far as about, you know, what miracles and what blessings have you seen. But I was at a point in my life where I um, was going to lose the house, had two kids, trying to find somewhere to live. And I did the math, and I knew all I could afford was $800 a month. And I had a boy and a girl, so I wanted them each to have their own room. And I wanted my own room as well. <laughs> So um, we began looking for a house, and I took it to God, and I cried out. And I said, God, you know my finances better than I do, and you know the $800 a month that I can afford. So I, I asked my kids, I said, what are some of the things? Because God loves us, and he wants to bless us, not just to bless us, but also to bless others. And, and he promises we won't lack. He will take care of our needs. And there was a verse that I remember just grabbing a hold of, and it was Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you. They're plans for a hope and for a future. And I felt so broken and so lost. and like, what am I going to do? How am I going to take care of two kids on one income? How am I going to pay rent without getting another job? And what was absolutely amazing is, as I began to ask the kids, what are the things that you want? In, in a home, because I said, let's, let's ask God, why not? What do we have to lose? So Josh asked me, he says, Mom, can we pray for a blue house? Can I pray for a deck in the backyard? And I'm like, okay, we'll add that to the list. Kirsten says, Mom, can I pray for a fireplace? And I'm thinking, oh God, they're really stretching you. <laughs> okay, we'll add it to the list. And I said, so God, let's, can we do three bedrooms, two baths? I mean, $800 a month? Are you kidding me? Anyhow, but, but I was wanting to walk in faith, knowing that I was being obedient to what God had asked me. And so I thought, well, I want a small front yard and a big backyard. I want it in town. Um, there was some flooring that I threw in there. I said, God, you know, just if you want to, you can do this too. <laughs> so I wanted some laminate flooring and some flooring that looked kind of like it was rock. I didn't care if it really was rock. And you know, it was absolutely amazing. We were looking at houses and I'd go look at these other houses with the kids and they're like, mom, that doesn't meet the list. Why are we even looking? Do you have faith enough? And I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> So anyhow, what ended up happening, I was over at a couple's house and uh, didn't have internet, asked if I could look on Craigslist, and here was this house. And so we made an appointment to go see the, the landlord, and there were four other families there. Now, if you know landlords, they want couples. They want two incomes, right? So remember, again, I'm being faithful in giving what God has said to give and tithing. And what happens, we show up there, there's four other families that are looking at the house. Couples, you know, two incomes. And that morning, God said to me, wear your Erickson jacket. I thought, well, that's weird. Why? But okay, I'll wear it. And so I put my Erickson jacket on, showed up to the appointment. And as the four groups of people were walking around, the landlord came up to me and he tapped me on the shoulder and he says, stick around. He says, I have renters from Erickson. They're good. And I think I want you. And I thought, wow, 
this is amazing. This is amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, if I hadn't listened, how would he have known? So by the end of that appointment, he had already said, you're going to get it. And, and I said, well, I want to confirm how much you want per month. And he said, well, I want $8.95 a month. And I thought, God, that's not what I bargained for. And I had printed out from Craigslist that it said $7.95 a month. So I took my little piece of paper out and I said, this is what Craigslist said. And he says, you know what? You're going to be a good renter. I'll give it to you for $7.95. <laughs> so, you know, we worry about how are we going to take care of everything? How are we going to afford it all? And maybe the math doesn't make sense. But it's okay, and I remember, I think it was Pastor Steve who said it, Godonomics. It's Godonomics. It's Him. We honor Him first. And like what Buddy said, you know, I decided I'm not going to pay all the tithe or the, the, the giving at the end. I'm going to do it up front. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. been amazing, an amazing journey. So I would encourage all of you, be obedient, first of all, to the Word. But as God lays things on your heart, even if it's, wear your Ericsson jacket or whatever company you work for, you listen to that as well, because this isn't just about the finances. This is also about everything else that he says in Matthew 6, that we are to pursue him. We are to seek him first. And he promises all these things, all, all these things will be added to you. All right, well, Wendy kind of beat me to the question about asking what kind of miracles has God seen, but we've got to hear it. God has done some incre incredible things, so we'll go to the next question. Um, what encouragement would you give to somebody that wants to start this generosity journey? I get to talk now. <laughs> I get so excited. You skipped the question for me, by the way. <laughs> I didn't get to say what, when generosity started for me. All right, well, tie it in, both of them together. Okay, quickly though, when generosity started for me is actually generosity given to me. As a youth, I came from a, a poor family, single mom, and youth was going on a winter's retreat, and I didn't have the money. And then all of a sudden, somebody you know, told me, the youth pastor told me, uh, somebody paid your way. I'm like, what? Really? Wow, that's pretty generous. I mean, and I was excited, man. I'd get to go skiing and the snow and be in a cabin. Little did I know God had different plans that night because that's the night I got saved. So forgive me if I get a little emotional, but so after that, it was in my heart to send other youth to youth camp so they could experience what I experienced and receive the Lord. And you really think about it, I mean, the blessings in, in your life, I mean, and we don't take time, we always look at the negative more, and then that's the way the world is and has programmed us, but when you start looking at the positive things in your life and what God has done for you, and you say, you know what, God, use me to do that for somebody else. And it's amazing. God turns around and blesses you more so you can bless more people. That's right. That's good. Wendy, did you want to add anything? <laughs> well, you know, we've been sharing as far as what happened before we met and the journey that, that we went along uh, before we met. And I, I really believe that... Uh, we were called together because God knows our hearts and we have hearts of generosity and he perfectly matched us. And, and I really honestly believe as well that if when we had met, if I would have still been living, just spending the money, not worrying about being faithful to God, I don't think that this would have happened the way that it did. And so I really attribute a lot of what we both chose to do as single people that led us to where God knew how to match us together. And we were just talking the other day, and I, we both looked at each other and we said, did you ever think 
marriage could be so good and so much fun. Any of you guys who watch us on Facebook? <laughs> we have so much fun. And even so <laughs> even in Walmart, no matter what we're doing, but <laughs> it, it, they shut you off, honey. I'm sorry. <laughs> they warned us about that. No. <laughs> but um, Your generosity, man, you know. <laughs> But if you see us on all these trips, this is the other thing I just, I want you guys to know, again, it's not just about the finances. Those trips that we've gone on, we went to Tennessee, his company paid the entire thing. The majority of the trips we go on, we don't pay for. God pays for it. I mean, through the generosity of his work or through my work, Disneyland, we went to Disneyland and didn't have to pay any hotel, any airfare. God provided for that. So, you know, you say, what would you say to encourage people to give? Why not? Give. <laughs> I, I, I just challenge you, just give, do it. And it says in his word, test me and try me that he won't open the floods, floodgates of heaven. So I just, I encourage you and just think. For those of you who may have stage fright right now, you may be up here next time. And we'll all be cheering you on. All right, as you guys can see, this is just really the beginning of Buddy and Wendy's generosity story. And I'm sure that there's a lot more stories to come. I would encourage you, challenge you, Buddy and Wendy are an amazing couple. First, we want to say thank you so much for being generous and for sharing your story, but also come and meet them. Come and talk to them after service, hear the rest of their stories, hear about all of the miracles that God's doing in their life, just from them being willing to listen and obey and give. Um, you know, we're really excited for um, this victory series. And just a common theme that you may have noticed from all of the couples, and it's such a beautiful picture of how God works, is that God starts where you're at. He meets you where you're at. Amen. If you're feeling the nudge to be generous, God's not going to ask you to give beyond your means something that you don't have. What do you have? What do you have? And what can you give? And I, I challenge you, I promise you, if you give it, God's going to do something miraculous. How's everybody doing this morning? Doing well? Well, first off, we want to welcome all of our visitors, and we thank you so much for being with us this morning. And as we're talking about our victory offering today, we don't want you to feel pressured if you came in. It's uh, something as a church family, we've been on a journey seeking the Lord and just setting our hearts. But we are so glad you're here and um, have a great service for everybody here. But for us as a church, um, we've been on this journey of, of, God, what do you want us to, to give? How can we just grow in generosity? Amen. And I know we were encouraging people um, to begin to pray and, and ask the Lord. And so we were also saying, if you're married, talk to your spouse and begin to pray. And so Riley and I, it was cool. Um, testimony is we didn't really, like, we were kind of running 100 miles in, the, in different directions, so we're texting, okay, be praying, what does God want us to give? And finally, we get a night, and we're, we're both actually laying in bed, and I'm like, well, he, what did God say to you about victory giving? So I didn't want to give him what God told me, and, and I'm waiting, I'm like, is God speaking the same thing to us? And uh, it was kind of an odd number. And he says, I'm hearing this number that God wants us to give. And I'm like, that's the same number God told me. We're like, this is awesome. I thought it was cool. And uh, so we're like, sweet. We're like, Skylar and Jamie, God does that to them all the time. So thanks. No, but uh, this morning, I want to share a verse. And um, and for, you got handed this, this victory pledge card, and so many of you guys have already come ready, prepared. And if you would just fill this out, maybe you're going to just be pledging um, a monthly gift to give towards it, and we are not going to hunt you down. We're not going to call you or chase you for this. This is just between you and God. And, um, but we want to invite you to, to write this down, or maybe you're giving your whole offering this morning. You can still please fill this out and, and turn this in. So if you just go through that, you can also go to our Push Pay app, and uh, right on there it says Victory Giving Plan. You can do your pledge right now on there as well. But I want to read the word, two verses. In 1 Chronicles 29, verse 14, it says this, But who am I? 
and who are my people that we could give anything to you for everything we have has come from you and we give you only what you first gave us. I love these last few weeks as we've just been hearing the testimonies of the three different couples and the theme you hear over and over, there's just a recognizing that everything we have has been given by God. It's been from God. Every need has been met, that God is so faithful. And I know in my personal life, just faith has been coming as I've just been hearing the testimony of God's goodness, the faithfulness of God, amen? And lastly, I want us to read Ephesians 3.20. It says, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. And you know, this morning, church, wherever you're at, I encourage us to begin to let God stretch our faith to realize he is able. He is not limited. He is for you. What do you need? God is able through his power. Come on, through Godonomics, through his ability, he's able. What do you need this morning? I want to encourage you just um, to surrender those to God. If you're here as a first time visitor, we serve a God, the God you're hearing us talk about. He is a God who is able to meet you where you're at, to bring victory in your life, to bring joy, amen. So this morning, for those of you that are going to be giving in our victory offering, we want to just rise as a church. We're going to worship, and we're just, as we're worshiping, we're going to invite you to come with your spouse, come um, as singles. Maybe you'll find your future spouse, because do you want to marry somebody that's generous? Hey! <laughs> I've been praying the Lord. <laughs> Buddy's gonna buy a steak, first date's on him. So, <laughs> praise. There you go. Somebody's getting a spouse. To, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> That's a joke. Um, but as you come forward, Pastor Steve wants to pray for, for everybody and come with your family, come with your spouse. But we're just gonna take a moment as an act of worship just to come and give, give our offering. It, this is not for regular offering. If you um, have your regular offering, the ushers right now will just begin to pass for the offering. But we're gonna stand and those of you that are gonna bring your pledge cards and bring your offering, just come forward and we're gonna worship. Amen? Rise, you can rise to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. In the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. And nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful you can stay name forward as you come. We're going to pray together. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. And nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. Hold. And death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the most of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. And for you are raised to life again. And yours is the kingdom, and yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, in the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is And nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is 
riskiest time that a farmer faces is that scary time called planting. You see, because that wheat farmer up in Walla Walla, Washington, or the Dalles, Oregon, when it's, is he takes his good grain, which could have been ground up and eaten his bread, but he's going to put it in the dirt. Once it's in the dirt, it's irretrievable. It's gone until that stalk comes up. And then the sun and the nutrients and the rains and or the irrigation causes there to be a harvest. This victory offering and the training that we do year by year is not because God can't fund what we do through a number of various means. But what it is designed to do is to allow God's people to get on the God onomics, not the self onomics, not the scam onomics, but to bring people, and that's why the miraculous testimonies. Wow. I want to tell you something. The couples that have been coming up and sharing what God's done, they're going to do it if two-thirds of us decided not to give. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Kim and I, we're able year after year to say, Lord, this is so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Not only do we want to just not even consider the tithe, the tithe for us doesn't even take faith anymore. God has so caused us to exceed, blessed us financially that the tithe, wow. That's kind of like someone saying they can't afford to buy a straw, much less the soda. Yeah. The tithe is just easy. And so our challenge is, Lord, what can we do? We've seen the Lord just causing our, our, our debt as we pay it. Debt snowball, just erasing the debt. Raising great kids, educating them, loving people. Seeing that the money goes to the nation's to feeding the poor. This, I believe it's this Thursday we're going to have our pantry open again. How many of you know that, that you could not drop too much money in the offering? If there was a billionaire that dropped a billion dollars, Phil Jaquith can spend it. Jesse McCall can spend it. We have people that want to touch the nations and they want to build churches and training centers. They want to feed the poor in their nations. How many of you know that this is the means where God says, I want to give you victory. Yeah. So what I want to pray is I want to pray over those that have participated. We're going to keep, the, keep this offering open for about uh, two or three more weeks. And, and so maybe, maybe your pledge this year might be $50. You say, well... That's not a lot of money. It is when you do it by faith. It, God may speak in your heart and say more. The key is whatever we do, we do it by faith. How many of you know down here are the farmers? These are farmers. They're, they're saying, okay, when I give, I don't get to have it right now. But like that wheat farmer in Walla Walla, I'm watching. Up comes the stalk. Up comes the, the, the ear, and then harvest comes, and guess what? You have a lot more grain to grind for bread and a lot more seed for sowing. How many of you like God's method? It's pretty cool, isn't it? Father, right now I pray for this whole house. Lord, even for people that are visiting and may never, ever come back to joy, Lord, you are so good. You want your plan to be known because this is how you blessed our nation. 
Our nation was built on people who, who worked and they sowed and they re-sowed and they planted their seed and they built churches and they built cities. Lord, we thank you that by faith we risk what we have and we, we trust you. And many of us, it's not even a risk because we know how this sowing and reaping works. Lord, that what we give comes back, multiplied back to us. Lord, we speak concerning this house that there would be no poverty among us, that the poor would come in and they would be overwhelmed by generosity. People who care that their children have warm clothing, people who care that they have transportation and housing, and that the, the very nature of poverty and the oppression on the mind would be broken. And so today, in victory, we sow our seed. And we pray, Lord, that you would not only bless each family, each individual that's giving, but Lord, touch our city, touch our region, touch our county, touch our state. Lord, we thank you for victory in this area. Lord, I pray that you would get up into the business of the businessmen here. Lord, we rebuke the devourer. We speak blessing. We speak uh, contracts and opportunities. We speak for those that, that are, are uh, wage earners, Lord, that you're going to give promotions. You're going to give advancement. You're going to cause some people that never dreamed they'd be an entrepreneur to suddenly get an idea. Even like Harlan Sanders, Colonel Sanders years ago in his 60s and had, had failures, but he, he opened up Kentucky Fried Chicken and the rest is history. Thank you, Lord. You're a creative God, and we thank you for your victory. We speak blessing upon you, upon your vision, Lord, for the nations, for this city, your vision for each family here, and we bless those that have been able to sow into this, this offering, and we bless those who are contemplating, and Lord, elevate your people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But anyway, we, we had an encounter, about 80, I think about 80 to 85 people in the encounter. And uh, it was one awesome party. And then today, it's Pastor Steve's pizza party. Okay. And it's the honor system. And uh, if you lie and eat free pizza, then God wants to convict you and have you read the Bible two or three times through next year. But anyway, I, I, just as we're still finishing up the offering, I just want to tell you that it's, it's a hoot to see little kids. They'll come up to me at the party and go, I read my Bible six times. <laughs> really? Y yesterday I did. <laughs> Can I see your Bible? It's a picture Bible. So why do, we, why do we let them do that? Because we want to get them hooked. Right. Hooked on Scripture, right? <laughs> okay. And so they do it. I'll pray over that. All right. Thank you, Father, for your provision. Thank you for uh, how you uh, multiply our giving. Thank you for the blessing on this house. Lord, every, every bill is paid. You, you do all things well. We thank you for that. Give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Children's Church is dismissed. All right. They were well behaved. That was a longer time. All right. Give those kids a hand. We believe in sowing and reaping. That's why we've named the children the children of the corn. Uh, I've got a few minutes, and I'd like to uh, finish up session four in our, our victory series. Uh, we've been looking at one topic from three different uh, perspectives, and the topic that we've been handling is God's victory through joy. Joy is an amazing gift that God gives his people. There's peace, which is a real shorter term thing. You're, you're at peace today. You feel peaceful, but you have joy about the ongoing. And so when I looked up peace and joy, it's really hard to say, well, are you feeling peaceful? Or are you feeling joyful? And then there's another Greek word that talks about like, like going crazy with joy, 
And then it's often translated as leap for joy or jumping for joy. But joy is really a longer term perspective. The Bible said that Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. I find that people that have true peace and joy working in their life tend to be longer term planners because they don't believe they have to get immediate gratification. You millennials listen to that? Okay. How many of you know that our culture wants microwave everything and the kingdom doesn't work on microwave? The kingdom works on faith, patience, easy does it, give some energy to it, watch it grow, multiply it, replant, and go. That's how the kingdom goes. And the, the people who can be joyful about what they're fixing to see happen, they, they have joy and it abides little setback, no problem. You know, I remember the time that my dad and I were trying to put a new uh, uh, water pump on my old Ford station wagon that I had, and, and uh, we, 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 we bought it from like Shucks Auto Parts, and we put it on, and it leaked. We took it apart, and it leaked. I think we did it six times. Finally, we thought, let's just turn the gasket around. We turned the gasket around, it didn't leak. That's just how German guys solve things. No, you didn't tighten it. You know? <laughs> well, we tightened it down, it just needed to be turned around. How many have had, had things that, that, that were frustrating? Okay, but you persevered, and you finally got it done, and you were happy. How many of you like uh, tackling a problem and saying, I know I'm going to win, I just don't know how yet? That's a joyful experience. That's what Jesus does. He brings joy in our life. We've been looking at joy and the victory that comes from joy. So we saw it, that there's joy in you. When, when you receive Christ, it's amazing how he changes your view of your life. It's important to know God loves us not only as a group, but more so as individuals. That's why he didn't call your number, he called your name. He called your name. Joy in you brings victory. Joy comes to the city. We looked at the city of Samaria receiving the evangelism from uh, Deacon Philip also known as Philip the Evangelist, said there was joy in the city. Last week, Natalie taught on joy to the world. That everywhere joy goes, and it's a little play on our words as we're a part of a movement now called the Joy Church Movement. We're Joy Church Medford. There's Joy Church Eugene. There's Joy Church La Paz, Baja California Sur. There soon in the fall will be Joy Church Grants Pass. And uh, we're, we're believing for Joy Church Chicago. We're believing for Joy Church Bend. Joy Church Salem. Hallelujah. Okay. But, but when Jesus shows up, there's joy. What are you at Joy, joy Church Medford for? Well, I just need more religion. No, you don't. Religion won't, won't bring you joy. Religion can be miserable. If you're here to connect with Jesus, where Jesus goes, there's joy. So in the Joy Church movement, if we forget to focus on Jesus, we can just be drier than cracker juice and it just add to people's overall misery. But where Jesus goes, things happen. And I want to finish this series called Joy Everywhere. As, as I was waiting on the Lord, I felt he wanted me to speak on the demoniac of Gadara. Victory series? And the last focus is the demoniac. When I'm out of this boot, I am going to do the second time of the enactment of Christ sending the demons into the pigs, and I'll leap on the pulpit. 
It may be the last time I'm able to do it, but I think I've had so much popular demand, and this time we need to film it. And then that's to be, that's to be shown at my funeral, and once a year it's to be shown. This is our founder in his, in his finest hour. Well, today I'm not going to do the sounds, and I won't be leaping on the pulpit, but we're going to look at what happens when Jesus gets up in the grill of somebody that is more bound than anybody. This guy was more bound than all 85 people that came to our, uh, to our encounter yesterday. Look with me at Mark chapter 5 and, uh, and following. Then they came to the other side of the sea to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he, capital H, Jesus, had come out of the boat Immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Now, you know, I've been on a number of boats. They're called cruise ships. And many times when I've gone, uh, you know, into the launch or onto the dock, I'm often met with people selling things. But it's like, how do you want to have your boat end? You get out of the boat, and immediately there comes a dude from the tombs. That's a bad indicator right there. Where, where are you coming from? The tombs. Wow, this is really going to be a joyful event. The tomb dweller. This man had an unclean spirit. We're going to find out he had probably more than one. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broke in, uh, broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshiped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. Let me just make an editorial uh, indicator here. The man worshiped but the voice cried out from him a different message. We need to understand that we are a dichotomy. There's the real you, and then there are the voices that are affecting your life. Drugs mess up people. There's a drug that you can take, not that you should, please don't take it. I don't even know the name of it, but I call it the face biter drug. There's a drug that circulated and it will cause the most benign person to attack people and begin to eat their face. I first heard of it probably about 10 years ago, an event in, uh, in Florida. Let me just say this, I hate drug addiction with all my heart. I hate anything that takes away and masks your soul. You're in pain, let's run to Jesus. Let's not run to the pharmacy shop. Okay? We have a drug house just right in our neighborhood. And, uh, and, 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 and I call it the Fred Meyer of, of just because you'll see people parking here and going over to, you know, I want to put up a sign, drugstore here. And you know what? The people that live there, they're the sweetest to us. <laughs> Believe it or not, they watch out for our church. And I'm saying, God, I don't want to judge them. I just want to see them saved. The best way to quit dealing drugs is, is, is start dealing Jesus Christ because he's the, he's the sobriety machine that beats anything. But there are two voices that 
that we can be channeling. There's really who we are. Something tells me that there was something about this man that though he was tormented and breaking shackles, he came and he worshiped Jesus. And then these voices call out through him. I think we need to love one another with the love of God, and we need to love the people in our world. And don't always take what's coming out of someone's mouth as being from them. It could be part of the torment package that's ripping their life up. And it takes discernment to know who's talking. For he said, Jesus said to him, come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. The, the, the collective name of this group of demons was Legion, which a legion of Roman soldiers went from four to 8,000 people. Wow. Man, one stop shopping for demons. Now think about how a guy could acquire that many demons. He must have probably been abused from a baby. Every kind of evil thing done, possibly exposed to witchcraft, possibly exposed to sexual ritual abuse, something really, really scarred him to where his soul became an on-ramp for multiple demons. Also, he begged him earnestly that he would not send him out of the country or send them out of the country. So this spirit is speaking for the plural. Don't send us out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission and the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. So per pig, they might have had to house a few extra demons. It didn't say there was one, one demon per pig. But if there was, we know there was a minimum of probably 2,000 in this man. One thing I can appreciate about the pigs, one, they ran into the sea and became deviled ham. And the demons were smart enough to, want to not want to live a life being occupied by unclean spirits. My prayer is that every one of us would say, I, I don't want to have any riders. I don't want to have any hangers on from, from in my life. I want everybody out of the pool. There's one spirit I want in me, and it's called the Holy Spirit. Not a religious spirit, not a fake spirit, not a hypocritical spirit, not a lustful spirit masked under being a nice person, not a porno spirit, not a drug addict spirit, not a, not a mooch spirit, not a, 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 a victim spirit. How many of you know one spirit is the one recommended by the kingdom of God, and it's called the Holy Spirit? And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled. I would too. Wow, there goes your inventory. <laughs> and they told it in the city and in the country. They went out to see what it was that had happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. That's joy everywhere. Jerry and Jamie are probably done with service down in La Paz. They're about an hour earlier than us. But I've seen one man, Bernie, Bernie and Cindy. Bernie was a very wealthy Canadian, out of control people in the community, because Bernie was the guy, he was the toast of the cocktail set. A lot of very wealthy Americans and Canadians and what they call expats go to places like La Paz. 
Your money won't buy away your demons. Your money won't pay away your chaos. And I watch Bernie. He's there early making coffee. He's loving on Mexican families coming in. Because in the middle of his chaos, Jesus arrived in the person of Jerry and Jamie. And they told their story. And Bernie Crane is a lover of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, I feel like I can preach this morning. And I'm under orders to end at noon. Only five minutes. You can endure it. Then we'll take up our third offering. No, we won't. (laughs) Here were the people, they see the one who had been demon-possessed sitting and clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. Can I tell you something that really burns me? Good grief. What kind of a person would prefer the status quo than rescuing someone like this? What kind of meanness and selfishness would prefer to drive Jesus out of the community because it's disrupting my status quo? I really believe that God's prosperity can touch all. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon-possessed and about the swine. Then they began to plead with him, to Jesus, to depart from their region. Maybe the demons of covetousness and lust, child abuse, dominating their wives, being cruel, maybe those spirits said, we got to get him out of here. Look what he did for that guy. We're the next to get delivered. How many find out that when God begins to really work on you as a believer, that sometimes you'll go into almost like a rage? What is it? Are you demon-possessed? I'm not going to say it's demon-possession, but I can tell you this. If you breathe, you're under attack from demonic. And sometimes the flesh nature wants to get Jesus off your case in a hurry. How do I know that? Because my flesh is just as nasty as yours. Maybe it's worse than yours. That's what you're hoping. (laughs) But maybe not. Maybe we all have flesh. I know one thing, that that, that we've got to love freedom. That's the purpose of expanding. That's the purpose of why we're reaching out and seeing young people come here. Some of them don't have anybody that's waiting to hug them at home. Some of our kids don't have anybody excited about them being baptized. And in fact, some of our kids go through persecution because rather than being the usual family drug addict or alcoholic, they got to be really weird. They pack a Bible now. When he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. Man, I want to go. I'm digging this joy to the world movement. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis. Decapolis was a mini metro area up in the Sea of Galilee region. Decapolis stands for like a metropolitan of ten cities, Decapolis. It wasn't like that he was being told, hey, I want you to go back to Butte Falls. And I've got a friend that's pastored there for over 20 years in Butte Falls. It's a great church, great Assembly of God church. Okay, but it wasn't like he was being told, I'm going to send you to remote Oregon or Doofer. He said, I want you to stay here in the Decapolis region. He's actually given him a a good, good challenge. And the fact that he didn't take him with him meant that he knew there was something about this 
prisoner set free that didn't need a lot of extra help. <laughs> How many of you know that people that are bound today, many of them, when they get free, they're never going to want to go back in the world. I'm so glad that we got people in this church, man. They tell you, it sucked the last time I was there, and I've looked over the fence every once in a while, and it didn't got any better. You know who we have trouble with? People that have not gotten sick to where they threw up on the world, and they keep thinking that God's lucky to have them. Not the people that got really free. Not the people that understand, man, I, I was not a star on the rise. I was a flake on the fritz. God got up in my grill and saved me, and I should be in hell or dead. I think of my late friend John Gomez, how he talked about when he was a young guy and he was lost, and he'd wake up, you know, at a party, and one time he woke up on a friend's uh, 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 dining room table or, uh, you know, uh, living room table, and in a, in, a, in a pile of, of blood and throw up, and his stomach was being ripped up and destroyed. But Jesus got a hold of Johnny until the day he died. There was never anything he ever thought was funny about the old world. It was like, adios, you're a bad date, we're done, we're through. Yeah. Jesus said, go home and tell all your homies. What, that God has had compassion on you, and he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis. <laughs> he was going from town to town, telling people, this is great. I don't worry about joy growing. Do you know why I know joy is going to grow numerically? It's because you have joy in you. I don't worry about, uh, I don't worry about Joy Church La Paz growing. I know they're going to grow. Because why? Because Bernie's there. Because Jerry's there. Because Jamie's there. And they have joy in them. And where there's joy, the joy of the real Jesus, not the plastic Jesus, not the Jesus that's on the back of your car, but the real one that lives in you and sets you free, you're going to go around. And wherever you go, you're going to be telling people. You're going to tell people that God is still has a day of favor where they can come into the kingdom and that their chaos can be delivered. Amen. Thank you, Suzanne. Okay. You love the delayed amen, you know. We're on to a new point. Suzanne goes, amen. Thank you, hon. Okay. Just a couple points and we're going to end this. But we're, I hope it's not going to end the burning in your heart. I feel some swag about my Lord. I'm not I'm done talking about him. And neither are you. Freedom that comes in Jesus. I've got nothing to be ashamed of. What I've done in my life I can be ashamed of. I'm glad that someone paid in full for my stupidity. But I will not be ashamed of Jesus. I will not be ashamed of speaking in tongues. Amen. I will not be ashamed of the power of the name of Jesus and how he heals the sick. I will not be ashamed of the one that will enter the chaos of a guy like this that everybody's hiding from. Point one, this man had, and many people are tormented by the demonic. If you are not walking in the fullness of joy... You are as well. You say, well, I'm a Christian. Yeah, but you're a Christian. That's only partway free. Let's get all the way. Let's get all the way free. Number two, conventional methods don't bring the cure. I want to tell you something. I'm not at war against people that, that are on uh, a depression medicine, but I want to tell you something. It's the world's halfway attempt at doing what only Jesus can do. Really put, the, put deliverance into your depression. Put it into your chemical imbalances. Don't trust the, 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 the pharmacy dealers to give you your an answer. If they were the answer, then you should be able to take a gospel pill from there and go to heaven without having to humble yourself before the name of Jesus. Conventional methods don't bring the cure. Number three, wherever Jesus lands, the demonic know his authority. The demon spirits, they hate 
life-giving liberty churches. They hate people like you that are full of freedom. They want to they suppress you. They want to try to give you contradictory results. They want to hurt your business. They want to mess with your babies. They want to bring disunity in your marriage. And you, to walk in your freedom, you've got to defend it by walking in the Holy Spirit and by being full of the Holy Ghost every time. I know one thing. The demonic forces in Medford know I'm around, and they have opposed me. And as far as I'm concerned, they can kiss my butt. Because God sent us to bring joy in the city. To say there's a new sheriff named Jesus Christ in town. And he's not a partial gospel Jesus. He's the full gospel Jesus. He still has authority over the demons. He still has authority over disease. He still is a family builder. He's still a restorer of paths to dwell in. And the minute that the demonic forces in this valley are happy with me is the time I know I've forsaken my primary purpose, which was to bring in the kingdom of God. And they weren't happy with Jesus. Number four, Jesus has the power to deliver. (laughs) Number five, the sign of deliverance is, is being clothed and in your right mind. I look at your families. I'm so proud of your church. I see people that are are showing up and and, and the chaos of their marriage is being being evaporated. They're, they're, They're clothed. They're in their right mind. Not a bunch of people looking like religious zealots doing weird things to act like you really know God. You just look like a bunch of humble people that say, hey, we're here to be quiet and listen. Tell us how to keep the good stuff going. Tell us how to just raise our kids. Tell us how to bring Jesus Christ to people that are really bound, not to just simply have some kind of religious ceremony where Christians bless Christians to never reach the people like this guy that are broken and needy. I like what I see. I like the fruit that I see around me. In case you don't know who I'm talking about, look in the mirror. I'm talking about you. You're clothed and in your right mind. That's a sign of deliverance. It's where you used to be a drama queen and you said, I'm tired of that bull crap. I'm tired of being the drama person. I'm the one like Wendy. I'm going to get blessed. I'm going to retire the debt. I'm going to serve God. God is going to restore my life. Oh dear, he must have had red meat for breakfast. (laughs) There's always a community of individuals who aren't happy with Jesus Jesus upsetting the status quo. He's got to go. I want to tell you something. Jesus has not been run out of anywhere. He's not being run out of Iraq. He's not being run out of Saudi Arabia. He's not being run out of Somalia. He's not being run out of the White House. He's not being run out of the Supreme Court. He's not being run out. There's no place that can kick out the kingdom of God. But that doesn't mean there's not always going to be a community of people who aren't happy that you you, you broke the status quo. Well, you know, you've gotten to be really religious, and you're just not like the rest of the family. And we, you know what? Just say, yeah, I understand. But now let's get on to what I'm going to do anyway, which is I'm going to serve the Lord. Right? Right? The delivered are willing to follow Jesus. This is another way I know that you're delivered. You guys are willing to follow Jesus. Yeah. Number eight, Jesus often encourages individuals to spread the message where they live. Let me just give you a, a strategy that when we send Aaron and Danny up to Grant's Pass, we want to get way, I mean right behind, not way behind them. Like you're on your own, dude. What that means is that we're going to be sending up music teams. We're going to love them. And, and how do we know when we are winning in Grants Pass? When there's joy in that city and the people from Grants Pass begin to come out and they go, oh, thank you guys for coming to our city. 
And it's when the people of Grants Pass and Cave Junction and Williams and, 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 and Rogue River and, 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 and the communities there, when just like at Joy, we have people that come a long way to be here. We want to see that, that spider web happen as it's happening in Eugene now. As it's happening, Jerry and Jamie are not just touching the Baja. They have people that are that are learning about the Solid Rock Road and and, and uh, in Toluca and other parts of, uh, of of Mexico City or of Mexico, including Mexico City. How many of you know that that where you serve, if God has planted you, that not everyone's going to go out and plant a church at Joy. I hope those of us who stay here. That we don't say, well, you know, come quickly, Lord Jesus, and I'm just, you know, the, it's getting worse in the world, and, 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 and I don't care what goes on in the world. No. You are delivered to talk where you live and tell the people in your community what great things God has done for you. Amen. Let's all stand together. Hallelujah. I went longer, and... Uh, but I'm not asking for overtime. I'm not getting paid double for this, even though I worked overtime. It's been a good time. What I want to do is I want to open up that opportunity. I believe God wanted to, me to speak on a guy whose heart longed to worship Jesus. Maybe that's why he cried. Cried out at night. Ripped up. You and I were never made, made to walk alone. We were created to reach out and come to know our Father. To get reconnected. You'll never be happy no matter how you try to medicate your torment. But you can come to Jesus if he was willing to set free a guy that had possibly 8,000 demons. Trust me, you're 15 or nothing. Or you're one. Or your addiction. No one loves like God. I'm such a chump compared to the one I love. Everyone here, we're just chumps when it comes to love, knowing the love of God. If you're here and you say, I need help, I want to join God. I, I'm not where that guy was, but, but I'm in my own world of chaos. I need God to sort it out. Maybe you've been a Christian and you're just lost you got sidetracked by lots of distraction. If you're here and you say, I, I want that freedom, I want to join God, I want God to set me free so I can be his child, come on down right now. Start walking right now. I believe there are a number of individuals here. You're saying, I want that freedom. I just didn't know that there was enough power in God to do it. I thought I had to do it on my own. If you're here or you're walk, watching on the live stream or even on the archive, my message to you is that God loves you. And if you'll come to him, he will in no wise ever cast you out. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll be with you to the end. Last call. Last prayer will be for all of us. How many of you, including myself, can say, God is still sorting out my chaos in my life? <laughs> Get your hands up and leave them up for a minute because we're going to pray. We're not all that in a bag of chips, are we? We're just, we're doing our best to walk with God, needing his spirit every day, needing his power. God's still sorting out my chaos. And I don't want to send Jesus away. I don't want to tell him, Lord, uh, Lord, go away because I want the status quo. I don't want the status quo. I want to be troubled and 
no one bugs me like Jesus bugs me because he's out to repair me, to bring me to a good land. Could, could you pray with me for a moment? And then we're going to, Ali's going to give us instructions about, about my pizza party. Dear Father, thank you for sending Jesus. I thank you, God, that when you land, the demonic know you're there. The authority is there to save and to deliver. Lord, I thank you that you set this man free from the chaos and the bondage that he was experiencing. I ask you, Lord, continue to work bringing me through chaos. The things that I still think that are wrong. The responses I still have to crisis and problems. You're not full of drama. You're full of answers. Help me, Lord, to leave where, leave where I've been, to run to you, to be free, and to go into the region telling the people around me what great things that you have done. Thank you, Father, for freedom, for the things you've done in my life. I beg you, do not stop now. Keep refining me. Welcome to my chaos. I want to be clothed and sitting in my right mind. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.